And when you are ready to deploy your multi-target application or short MTA, make sure to run MBT build to create the MTA archive and deploy it with CF deploy. But wait, have you ever wondered what happens during the build process? And what is inside this MTA archive and what this file is in general? Then watch this video now. I will show you everything that you need to know about the build process. I will show you how you can inspect this file and you might be able to find out what is blocking you from your next successful deployment to SAP BTP. So let's start with this finished project here that is basically a bookshop application that leverages CAP and has a Vue.js uh, frontend application. As you can see here, when I run CDS run in memory, I can, the project is done. I can run it locally, uh, refresh the page here. So as you see, it's actually running. It just displays some uh, bookshop sample information. So good so far. But this project is not yet ready for deployment. The implementation is done, but there are multiple files missing for actually running it in the cloud. For example, the cup application hasn't been compiled to the season file. So it has it basically all everything is interpreted when I run a CDS run, which is not what we want to do in the cloud during or for deployment. And also the web application is missing some zip files that are necessary to actually run in the managed app router. And for the managed app router, all these resources need to be in the HTML5 application repository, which is also not yet clear. How do we get these files from our local folder to this repository service? And basically everything that is missing is the deployment instruction and the build instructions. And both of them can be found in the mta.yaml file here. In case you're not sure about MTA files, have a look at this link in the description that explains the multi-target application model in about 30 pages. So in here, I briefly recap or explain what you see. There is some metadata of the overall project. So that's why I call this the project descriptor. Then we have some general build command that is executed before anything else happens. And this is the CDS build command that will create the season file for us among other files. And then there are a few modules. There are five modules in general. The first module is the server module that is based on the gen.srv folder that will be created by this command. Similar, the database deployer is also built based on the gen folder that is created by this command. The HTML5 module is Basically, in this directory, it has a custom builder or build command, which is npm run build. I talk about that in a few moments. And then there's the web app deployer that basically has a dependency to this HTML5 module here. And actually, this module, as you see here, the supported platforms array is empty, which means this module won't be deployed later. It's just here for the build step. And um, yeah, so here it basically does some um, uh, data movement and it copies uh, HTML5 module content zip from the app folder that is not yet there yet to the resources folder in on the project root level that is also not that not yet there. And then we have the data at a destination content module that will create some destinations for us that are less relevant for the sample or for the purpose of this video. Let's stop the application that runs locally and trigger mbt, MBT build, this magic command that does all the build steps that we defined in this file here for us. So at very first, it basically uh, creates the gen folder via this command when it's executed. And in here, when we already have a sneak peek, we see there is a DB module that contains a package.json because the database deployer is an individual Cloud Foundry application that we deploy later on, has that sample data in it and so on. And there is an SRV folder that also has a package.json 
and in the SRV folder there is the season file that I mentioned before. So basically this is our or these two Cloud Foundry applications are part of our backend. But there are more steps to it. So you already see that while it's working, the MBT tool, MBT builder creates this temporary folder that basically con contains a copy of all the files that we will see in a few moments again. So you see there is a, a folder per module that contains a data.zip and basically in the zip folder is all the content of these files. And while it's continuing here, you see that it's already building the zip files for our web application, which is the manifest bundle zip, which is basically a zip file that contains only the manifest file that is used for the managed app router and the HTML5 module content zip, which contains all the other files that I mentioned here. Later on, it creates the resources folder, basically just copies this file or this zip archive over here. And then when it's done, we see the process is done here. The temporary folder is gone again. And instead we have this MTA archives folder here now. Let's have a look what is inside this MTA archives because you might not know, but basically this is just a zipped folder with a different file extension. But what we can do here is we can just jump in this folder and call unzip kapaya and then we basically tada we see the same files and folders that were previously in this temporary folder so there is the db deployer there is the bookshop and just to prove to you that basically this bookshop here has the same content as this sre folder in the gen folder in the project root I unzip this data uh, zip archive. There are many files in it because there's a node modules folder. And that's why I would say let's let it work in the background and have a look at what's inside the web app deployer. This is also an interesting folder. It has an uh, interesting uh, resources folder and the data.zip in it. So let's jump in there. Web app deployer resources and let's unzip the data.zip. And you see in this data.zip there could be multiple web applications. And there's one additional zip folder, many zips I know, for each web application. As we only have one applic web application, there is this only one additional zip named HDML5 module content zip, which might sound familiar to you as this is basically the same file that we already saw here. When I unzip it, you basically see there's this app.js and so on. So everything that you see in this MTA archives is basically a zipped version of our built resources with one additional folder, meta-inf. And meta-inf is basically has this manifest.mf file it just provides some metadata about the version of the builder that was used to generate this MTA archive and one like or three lines per module that define the module name, the content type, which is a zipped application and the path to this zip file that we see here and here and here and so on. And two additional files that are also included in the MTA archive that were just refer to in our mta.yaml file, as you see um, here in the UAA file, refer to this access security JSON, which is also why the access security JSON is part of the archive here. But now we come to the, in my opinion, most interesting file. There's an mtad yaml file, an mta deployment descriptor file that contains about 100 lines of code, whereas the original MTA YAML file has around 140 lines of code. I agree there are some white spaces, but there are more lines of code in here than in here. And the difference is, for example, that all the build instructions that were needed, for example, for this module here, are not present any longer in this MTA D YAML file because the build already happened. And what is important here is that only the um, 
deployment relevant instructions are kept, like which destinations need to be created during deploy time and which um, yeah, modules should be deployed and what kind of modules are there. So this is all in the MTAD YAML file. If you are interested about this file, there is an SAP help page about the MTA deployment descriptor syntax that might be of interest for you. And there are some sample codes in the CF MTA examples repository. And in there you see a project might have an MTA YAML and an MTAD YAML file. You can use the MTA file to create the archive for deployment, but you can also directly use the MTAD YAML file to deploy without doing a build first. And for this, you would basically use this CF deploy. You refer to the folder and not the file and with a dash F. So basically this is the command you can use to directly deploy without the build step before, which might come in handy at some time. And why did I show you all of this? Well, sometimes you get error messages during the deployment and you're not sure why is a, it says file XYZ dot HTTP table is missing. And you say, but I see the file here. Why is it missing? And then you could basically inspect your archive to see, is this file actually available? Is it here in the archive that I'm, I am going to deploy? Or another reason might be that you deploy an application, you deploy a new web application, but the deployed application is not updated. You still see the old version. Then you could jump right here, follow these same instructions and have a look at the files that are actually being deployed. And you might find out that something in your build process is broken and that the uh, application or the files that are redeployed are still the old files and not updated new files that you actually wanted to deploy. So as you see, this is very helpful if you want to inspect what is happening during deployment and if you want to debug this. So in this video, you learned what the MTA YAML file is, what the MTAD YAML file is, what the difference between both files are, what the MTA archive is, that it's actually just a zip folder that you can unzip and inspect everything that is around it. And with all this knowledge, you'll hopefully be able to understand the deploy process and build process in more detail and maybe even use this knowledge the next time you face an unsuccessful deployment and find out what is actually going wrong. I hope you enjoyed the video and we see each other next time.